yeah, it's, it's possible with that too. Uh, it's so great to be here because we are just about to celebrate our first birthday, first anniversary, and I think all of you know how that first is, is so special. And so it was June 15th last year that we, we first opened with many questions in our mind and in your minds, I'm sure, about how we would operate. And I can't tell you how personally gratifying it is to walk into this room and see so many people that I I, I know, and that we've had the wonderful opportunity to, to, to work with. And those of you who I don't know, I, I look forward to having that chance. And also that Brian Berry, our director here, have that chance to also wave Brian. <laughs> to see managers day to day. Um, we now have almost 2,600 members. Uh, we are thrilled with that. And just to give you a point of comparison, for those of you uh, who know our uh, uptown facility, which is uh, larger and, and has uh, a 50 meter Olympic standard pool, there are 3,200 members there, and that facility has been operating for 20 years. So 2,600 here, 32 there. We call that a win. We're very, very happy. And we hope that our members are happy with us. Uh, we'll see, certainly, because now will be the time when they'll be renewing their annual memberships. But we're being very careful to talk to people, to survey people, to have comment cards around so that we can respond to what people's concerns are. And one of the things that we've heard is that people are unhappy with the free access that they want as members, that is, for unstructured, unprogrammed play in the gymnasium and unstructured swimming so they can do recreational or lap swimming in the pool. And we have modified our schedule. And so uh, beginning with the summer semester, um, more time will be available for families and individuals to do that. And I mentioned that as an example that we're trying very hard to respond to the community. Additionally, for this spring semester, all of our instructional programs together, swimming, sports, cultural arts, attracted 1,500 people. Perhaps there were some duplications in there, probably not a whole lot, but we're very gratified by that also. Um, our swim program is overrun. We just, just do not have enough water. We don't have enough water in those classes. Many of them have maxed out. Uh, but we hope if you're interested, you'll look a little harder, talk with our director of aquatics, our little boys, and try to get into, into a class. Um, but honestly, uh, uh, the program that's struggling is our culinary arts program. And we've uh, worked hard to modify the program, make it more accessible, do more one-offs, more dating opportunity things, changing the menu. And so I hope you will take a look at uh, change the pricing. Uh, take a look at what that programming is. And hopefully, we will <clears throat> whet your appetite. Um, we're very pleased, because I didn't think this would happen, or at least not so fast, that uh, one of Asphalt Green's signature free programs is operating down here. And that is our waterproofing program, which is a partnership with New York City Public Schools to teach children how to swim. And it happens during the school day. So uh, our issue is to help children in the school recognize that swimming is an essential life skill. But we also appreciate that it's hard for schools to break the school day and to get kids here. Well, of the five schools that we are serving, four of them are coming from Brooklyn. They're coming from Brooklyn. So that's really gratifying for us, that, that they would load the kids on the bus, do, the, do that trek, and come here. So in total, there are over 300 students involved in that free program. At the end of June, we'll start our day camp. That's always very exciting for us. I have to tell you, uptown, my office looks down on the field. And one of the most gratifying personal experiences for me is to see all those munchkins, and every year they get littler, I think, um, having such a wonderful time at day camp. And I hope you will take pleasure in uh, stopping in, looking at our kids at camp, and seeing them on the field when we have access to the field. We're, we're very pleased 
that the issue of field use seems to have uh, been settled cooperatively, that we share it with other partners uh, during during the summertime. And uh, at least, uh, perhaps naive on my part, I think uh, nobody has dis been dislocated and everyone is happy with what's happening. So it's uh, delightful to celebrate this first anniversary. We're so pleased that you were to ask us to present. Um, thank you at the, at the community board meeting. And I certainly would answer any questions. Sure. What, what about our schools that are in walking distance to use your pool? Uh, well, I'll tell you the truth. We use an index of uh, poverty and free lunch for uh, for schools that we serve, because it's to totally for free. And we don't see that in all the local schools. I think you want to look more carefully. We do have that. I think that Paul area. might specifically be referring to some of the high schools in the area. Well, uh, well the high schools only, our, our free swim program is only targeted to elementary school children. Well, we, we have free lunches. Oh, I'm sure, there, I'm sure there are some. I'm sure there are some. And children who cannot financially, that is, if the school is ineligible, but the child is, we are more than happy to offer scholarships. And, and so, we'll be in touch with, you with, with Brian about that, yes. I mean, you know, I have to tell you, I am so unhappy about that policy, because the best thing we would like to do is to be good neighbors. But we, we run into a, a, a challenge when, because otherwise we would be open to every single school in, in, in New York City. Well, and so we have, would be a well, we have the same situation uptown where we have lots and lots of schools right in our neighborhood, but you don't have uh, that kind of data. But please talk to us actually, talk to Brian specifically about the schools that you, you're concerned with. We'll look again at the data and certainly the individual children who might be eligible. Thank you. More than please. One last question from John Crowd, and then we have to go. Is that policy set by your organization, or is it set by whatever funding source? No, that's, that's set by us. I, I and just find it to be really distasteful that your program in our community and kids from our community can access a free program like that. I just have a problem with that. Well, look at the particular schools. I hope you respect that there are uh, hundreds of elementary schools. And in order for us to serve those who have least access to the opportunity to learn how to swim, we set that policy. Our experience is that when we work with schools where the children who are affluent, most of them already have some experience in the water. So we're really trying to reach kids who never have experience with learning how to swim with familiarity with the water. But I, I realize it's uncomfortable, but as I said, we will look at the specific schools in that data again. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker, Sheldon, uh, David Shelton, followed by Bridget Chai, followed by Morris.